Hi, Miss Suzanne. Hi, Miss Murphy. <laughs> do you want to ask me some questions? Yes, I do. I have so many questions for you. <laughs> Um, which culture are you looking at? Okay, I've decided to look at the Hmong art and I found out that Hmong in their language means free. Also, I'm a little bit unsure how to pronounce this as I've only ever read it, but I believe that the H or the M is silent. So if I've mispronounced it, I'm very sorry. Can I ask where this is? Like what culture this is? Yeah. Let me just go through. So this is some images of the artwork. That the culture produces um, and this is their population distribution so it's based around Thailand and Vietnam and Laos and they're a nomadic tribe so they're all over so when we went to Chiang Mai I picked up these two pieces here do you remember mm -hmm. um, and this is one of the things that really inspired me because I was really interested in like a lot of the artwork that we saw in Chiang Mai was from the hill tribes and one of the hill tribes was the Hmong and so I wanted to kind of investigate a little bit more about what I'd seen there. Cool. What did you make and why? Okay. So I ended up making this bowl. Um, Pretty. Thank you. <laughs> now they usually don't do bowls. Like I saw a lot of embroidery and textile work and not really a lot of bowls. But I didn't really have any textile things available to me and I wanted to make something 3D because it was a bit of a challenge. Um, so I made this bowl and then used all the inspiration from the photographs that I found to decorate it. Awesome. What motifs did you use and what do they mean? Okay. So here I've just annotated this picture for you and there's all these different motifs. So the heart that you can see here is from this elephant's foot. And an elephant's foot is like a sign of prosperity, I think. And there's like a diamond in a square, which is to alter and imprint the most powerful and good spirit. Here, there are these little, little like up arrows that could be used to show protection or strength. But I use this motif here, which is um, Rick Crack Steps or a house for this idea of unity. So I like that that was in the middle because it's kind of like all built around this idea of unity. Um, I've used dots to give this idea of seeds. And then I've used cross stitches because a lot of their stuff was embroidered. And they use a lot of cross stitches. So I added those little crosses in. Um, I took this idea of the decoration with the stripes. Like you can see here, a lot of stripes in their work. Um, so I took that idea and did the decoration on the outside and then this shape is called a cucumber seed. I don't even know cucumbers had seeds that were like a motif that people would explore like that was quite interesting and they mean like abundance because this idea of like seeds and planting and how that plants means more. Awesome. I love motifs. So many connections to English. And maybe um, your INS unit as well like looking at how we different religions and stuff. Uh, beliefs, values, beliefs, cultures. Values, culture. Hmm, interesting. Oh, oh good. <laughs> what colors did you use and what do the colors mean? Okay. What do they symbolize? The one, so this is just a picture from my information sheet, just so you can see where this comes from. I had to add a bit of extra. Room. Anyway, colors. Now, the colors I found super interesting. So this is a quote that I got from Wikipedia. Um, so there's, different groups of Hmong, so like the different tribes within the big tribe, within the big group, have colours and that's how they're differentiated and it's based on the colours of the women's dresses. So the mm -hmm. white Hmong are because the women in that culture usually wear white um, on special occasions and then the blue and the green Hmong, you wear um, blue batik clothes. So they make their dye using indigo um, and then that's how they're described as like the blue green. So I used, although I didn't have the right blue for like an indigo dye, I brought in the blue, the white and the green to kind of show those three different groups. And then what I loved about the colours from the culture 
I couldn't really find that much more information about how they dye them. Um, I think it's usually traditionally was just indigo colours, whereas now they've got so many more bright and vibrant colours that are a lot more contemporary. So I just took, so say you've got this image here, I just took a load of those colours, like the pinks and the, the purples and the reds from those colours and brought those in. Nice. Oh. So pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um what else can you tell me about the culture okay so on my information sheet i've got these two facts that i found really interesting so one of them was to pick an artifact and tell you the role of the artifact so one thing that's really cool i found was that the hamong make skirts or clothing or um like clothing for whoever it is but the symbols that they use on the clothing are unique to the wearer so it's no two jackets or skirts or any garment will be the same. So if you're a young woman and you're like ready for a husband, you might have fish hooks. If you're an old man and you're sick, you might have symbols to represent good health and family or like a good passage to the afterlife, which is super cool because it's so different. And they're like such a story. They're called story cloths, but it's such a story um, that's so different to the way that we interact with clothing. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and then this question about what can I learn about the cultures or countries from this artifact? Like we said before, they were like all over the world. They weren't just based in one place. So I think that's kind of cool to understand a lot of different countries and that connection and the idea of nomadic tribes. I thought that was quite interesting. And then the idea of they make their new clothes for Lunar New Year. So the mother or young woman will design the combination of symbols um, to attract what they want in the year ahead. So the woman is the one that is in charge of making these designs. And so their symbols are almost like a visual language rather than um, a written language. So you can kind of trace what was happening through people's lives through the images that they've used. And then on this website, um, called Ethos Spirit of Community Dictionary of Hmong Symbology, you can combine your own and like make your own designs based on like what you want, which I thought was really cool. Miss Murphy, you have so many more connections with English, symbolism, ethos, oh, so many great things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you most proud of with your work? Um, I really like the colours. I think it's really pretty and I think it's decorated quite evenly, although it's not perfect. It is decorated quite evenly and quite evenly spread. So I quite like that. And I quite like how many of the different symbols and motifs and connections I've got in it. I really like the blue green color. I thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> um, my last question, mm -hmm. what would you improve if you could? So when I made it, I didn't have any um, sandpaper. So these edges are like, a bit raggedy which isn't great but I think overall the bowl functions as a bowl so that can survive with the edge but that edge is a bit messy and like some of the food. <laughs> pardon said it would hold food it right? would hold food I don't think I can eat anything wet in it like I can't don't think it would be like a cereal but maybe a sweet <laughs> um it's not what we call vitrified that means that this, the holes are small enough for the water to get in. Anyway, I digress. Um, along the edge, you've got like the little stripes and I think they're a little bit messy, like they could be neater. Um, so I think it would just be like neatening it up. And maybe if I could have, it would have been awesome to do some sort of embroidery or something like that. But using what I had, I think I did quite well. I think it's wonderful. Thank you for sharing your work with me today. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to post this on the Padlet and I'll share the Padlet link with you because you'll be able to see everyone else's work as well. And there's some amazing work that this group have done. And I think you'll really enjoy seeing it. Oh, I can't wait to see all of them. Thanks, Miss Suzanne. Thank you, Miss Murphy. Let me just stop the recording.